Cheers, bye. <coughs> Apparently you were informed yesterday that you were SP only. No, no, I weren't. Who told me this? What Where? traders does SP this bet? So, I'm not getting the odds? No. But every day I come in here, I see Fred saying, I like giving the value to my customers, and I can't even get normal odds. He he doesn't like giving the value to his customers. He's proved it there. But Fred, because he won't even give me these odds. I don't think it's so much that. It's obviously all the all the dogs you're you're backing. So you're either you're either in the no, yeah. or getting lucky. I would, well, no, you're not getting. You're definitely not getting lucky. I've, I've looked at your prices. Your prices have been six to one, backed in seven to four, mate. That, that doesn't happen. Yeah, on every on every horse, every, every dog you've done. That doesn't happen. So even you, you know, pretty much every dog you've done. How much does that pay out? Six at to SP? one into five to two. Yeah. Yeah, but I took the five to two. Three though. to one into seven to four. Nine to two into five to two. Four to one into eleven to four. So they're all being backed in. Yeah, but that first one, five to two, Kevin changed that, and that's proof that I took the odds at the time. <coughs> but Kevin wouldn't have known your SP at the time, would he? So this is this is the point. So when I phone up references, they, they're going to tell me the same thing anyway because they're going to see your bet on the system. So they're still going to SP you. So guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to optimise all your value bets. In this case, I've done it in shops using multiple bets, but I'm going to show you how you can do it online with any betting strategy that has a plus EV edge with it. The strategy I'm going to be explaining here is the one that made me good money like this on a regular basis, as well as uh, suffering a lot of shop restrictions on a daily basis too, as shown briefly in these videos. I've been losing money. Yeah, can't take any more of your business. Why not? Because we can't, I'm afraid. But you can't do that when I'm losing money, surely? Yes, we can. You need to switch it back on. No. Why not? Well, give me a reason. Because I've had a phone call to say otherwise. From who? My head office. And what's the reason? I'm bad for business. I'm bad for business? Yeah. Right, he's not allowed to go on them now. Who's that, me? Yeah, right. Right, well, no one's told me yet. Right, so he's not allowed to go on there. Right, right, right okay, right, you're not allowed, right. Talk, right. I'll, I'll, I'll ask him, I'll, I've got to pay him out, obviously. Yeah, I'll, I'll say that's it, then we can't take any bets, right. Okay, thanks, mate, bye. Yeah, I've been told by... You're not allowed to take any bets. The machine's gone off. What's happened to the machine? The machine's gone off. Right. That's fine, all that you've put on, but if you yeah. need to put any more on, I have to get, I have to get permission to do it. Oh, so yeah, so no more bets. Well, I'd have to put them through our system to get them checked for first. Just mm -hmm. Right, okay, thanks, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I'm not going to go on them now. So the non-runners didn't affect the price? They say you should go on an SP. So next time when this gentleman put a bat, it should be on SP. Next time what? It should be on SP only. These I took the prices on. Yeah, but next bet you do it from now on, it'll be on SP only. So. Okay. So, so during the rest of the video, I'm going to be showing you what types of bets I was doing. I'll be showing you real life examples. I'll be showing you real life bet slips, real life workings outs and how it was applied to my own betting strategy and how you can apply it to yours. I'm going to show you all the workings out on the screen so we can go along through it together. So a plus EV bet stands for positive expected value. So a good example of that would be if we was playing heads or tails for a pound each and every time that you won, I'd have to give you one pound five and every time that you lost, you'd only have to give me a pound. That would be a positive expected value bet in your favour. Except in this case, we're not playing heads or tails, we're playing with the bookies. Now, you might like doing bad each way betting. I've done a bad each way betting video here if you don't know what that's about. In my case, I've done it with shop betting. And the positive expected value I had per bet ranged from 25% on singles right up to 300 plus percent. And I'm going to show you on the screen now how that worked out. So I'm going to show you probably the best way on a calculator is just a simple calculator on the screen. As mentioned earlier, I had a 25% edge on average on all the greyhounds that I did, four singles. 
Now, of course, some of the singles that I was doing had a bigger edge and some had a lesser edge. On average, it was 125%. So I had 125% edge for a single. But I found that when you double these up, if you times 125% equals, it then compounds to 56% for a double. And then if you that was riding onto a treble, times 125%, it would then compound to 95%. Then on a fourfold, times 125% equals, now I know, 244%. Now I know what you're thinking already. Yeah, it's all right, you rambling off all these big uh, percentages. But what about the variance? Of course, yes, the variance does increase. It does increase. But I found that this was by far the best way of looking like a mug, in a way, um, and also getting the best return and the best bang for your buck. Because as well as that, on bets like the Lucky 15, you get concessions such as double the odds for one winner and a lot of these dogs I were doing was say four or five to one have you had double the odds on one winner like this uh, greyhound race here if I had five pound lucky 15 which was a total stake of 75 pound and there was only one winner at five to one um, that winner would therefore become ten to one so then I'd get 55 pound back just for one winner meaning I'd only have lost 20 pound on that bet and there's also bigger concessions for lucky 31s, lucky 63s. Now, all these multiple bets that I've put up on the screen earlier, you could go crazy and start doing Heinzes and Super Heinzes. And then I think there's after that, there's a Goliath bet. It gets silly in the end. Uh, but there's a lot of bonuses that they offer. Also, with Bet Fred, you get a 10% bonus if you get four out of four on a lucky 15 so these are definitely the way to go and i'll just do a calculation on um say on bad each way betting this can be applied to bad each way betting i did the video that i explained earlier i'll leave that on the end card about bad each way betting where you've got say a field of 15 runners on the horse racing and there's a nine to four joint favorite each of two and then the rest of the field have to be bigger odds now, because the rest of the field are bigger odds, that's fine. Um, the odds are usually smaller for the win portion, but the place odds, because it has to be a fifth of the odds generally, or a quarter of the odds if it's a handicap race, then the bookies cannot defend themselves. The place odds are over-exaggerated, so, and you'll see that in that video there. So let's do a calculation on if you had a 5% edge in the market so you'd have a hundred and five percent edge on a single and if you took the strategy that i just explained about like a lucky 15 for example a lucky 15 uh, is four is a yankee with four singles so you've got the accumulator there you've got trebles uh, four trebles and six doubles and four sorry four singles four trebles uh six doubles and one accumulator so let's work out what it would be a 5% edge in the market. So if we had a 5% edge in the market, which is fairly easy to find, we'd have obviously a 5% on singles times, so we've got 5% on singles times, what am I doing? 105% times 105% equals, now already that's up to 10% times 105% for the trebles. Now you're up to 16% nearly times 105% equals. So that's on the fourfold, 22% nearly. So you can see how quickly these percentages can compound as well as having the added effect of looking like a mug punter. Now you could argue that world well, bookies know that you're not a mug punter because you're taking advantage of these lucky 15s. But they are generally considered mug bets, poor value bets. Um, usually I wouldn't, if I was gambling, I wouldn't usually opt for a lucky 15. But it's only that concession added with um, added with the edge in the market makes a whole load of difference. So the bets I was doing were lucky 15s, 
lucky 31s i would have done super heinzes and heinzes but they would just reject those even if you went in there doing one pound heinzes the variance would shoot up but when you have a win that would be massive and if i had my own way when i was shop betting i would have done lucky 63s and upwards um on everything but providing of course there was enough runners because i was having loads of selections per day uh there was definitely enough runners most of the time so bear in mind guys when you've got value to play with if you've got enough selections the rule of thumb for pro bettors is compound all the bets make the bets worthwhile make the compounding interest we've all heard about compounding interest with savings and stocks etc the same applies here it's it's no different so always keep that in mind guys that you can always look a bit like a mug sometimes um, as well as the stake being a lot lower than doing singles now i know there's not a lot uh, there's less variance with singles but because the stakes are a lot bigger with singles this is another thing i disliked about it if you had a load of run of 20 or t sorry that's a bit extreme 10 singles lose you lose a lot of money if you put in 100 pound or so per per selection whereas if you lost uh four selections on a lucky 15 for a five pound stake you'd only lose um 75 pound wouldn't you and but you'd stand to win a lot more than the singles so another thing is that i would have done a lot more than five pound lucky 15 if i had my way but we found that i found that um doing higher they just would get rejected straight away because they look up on the board and see their PTL limits. Sometimes you get... See, another thing with a staff is you might have a, a staff who's who's inexperienced. Now, I've found that that can go one way or the other. If they're inexperienced, they can be a bit trigger shy about putting the, putting the slip through the counter and they can be straight on the phone. And when they get straight on the phone, at least 50% of the time, a mess piece straight away. Um, if they ring up and say it's a lucky 15 so a lot of the time what I was doing was mixing switching up my bets uh, to things like Yankees um, Canadians and stuff like that you can also do permed doubles permed trebles when I say by permed if you've got say 11 selections that would be 55 doubles in a bet I think off the top of my head I think it's 55 um, and say you've done two pound permutations doubles it would be 110 pound but you'd stand to win a, a you'd have a lot of legs there that you could uh that you could win from so i hope that's it helped clear up uh why using multiples with plus ev betting it doesn't matter what you're doing if you've got an edge in the market always look to multiply your edge it's the smartest way i've lived the experience of trying it out and it's a better way of doing it than the singles with less variance hope you're enjoying these series guys i'll be doing some other videos very soon please like if you like the video and subscribe hit the notification bell because there'll be a new video out soon good luck guys